Yes, you read the title right. Today we're going to be converting an iPhone XR into an iPhone 12. To our right we have the iPhone XR 256GB edition. And to our left we have an iPhone 12 housing. But it's been customized to fit an iPhone XR. You can see that the flash is over here. Where in the iPhone XR the flash is over here. We were provided with a module to actually move the flash over. Hopefully that works as promised. Essentially, we have to transfer all the components from our iPhone XR over to our iPhone 12 housing. This housing is completely naked, not even including the charging coil or the volume or vibrator buttons. There is a fake camera located under the real camera and the flash will also be moved to the left. We were provided with the volume buttons as well as the vibrator switch. The flash is also attached. This way, we can still use the flash with our custom housing. This process will definitely prove to be very tricky, but for the sake of customization purposes, we're gonna go for it and see how this turns out. We also have an iPhone XR, product red, as a donor phone, in case any components from the XR, that's 256 gigabytes, get damaged. Special shout out to Fans Create for providing me with premium quality tools as well as our custom iPhone XR housing. If you guys wanna try this at home, click the link in the description to buy this custom XR housing. Now that that's all said and done, let's begin. We'll start off as you do with any other repair by removing our two pentalope bottom screws. Now we can pry into the screen and pop it up. Next, we'll use our guitar pick and slide it across the frame of the screen. The screen can now come off and open up like a book. We'll use our screen holder tool to gently hold up the screen while we work on it. Next, we have to unscrew these three metal brackets. Now we can disconnect our battery ribbon cable, which is located right over here. Disconnect our screen, as well as our front earpiece speaker. We can now remove the screen and begin removing the internal components. We'll start off by disconnecting all the connections from the logic board. Apple likes to do things very differently and they tend to throw in a lot of booby traps for third party repairs. They even stack connectors on connectors. Now they removed all connections, we can begin to unscrew the logic board from the housing. Now that all our connections and our screws are removed, we can begin to pry up on our very small logic board. Comparing the iPhone XR board to the iPhone 8 board, Apple definitely made some serious changes. The iPhone XR board is actually two boards sandwiched together, while the iPhone 8 is just one. They also removed the left wing panel, which is quite an interesting design. This, if you ask me, is an insane powerhouse in very small size. Now we'll remove the SIM card reader, as well as the Taptic engine, the speaker, and the charging port. One of the screws for the Taptic engine, located right over here, seems to be stripped. So for now, we're just gonna have to lift our Taptic engine and kind of just move it out of the way. Fortunately, I managed to get it off by just pulling it. Now we can remove our bottom loudspeaker. It is held together by a lot of glue because this phone is water resistant. We're now gonna place our device on our heating pad to ensure minimal glue resistance. We can now begin to gently pry up on our charging port. I like to use a spudger to ensure I'm not ripping any of the ribbon cables. We can now remove our charging port, which is actually two components, and transfer it over to our iPhone 12 housing. We now have all the cables where they should be. It's time to start repopulating our iPhone XR custom housing, starting off with our loudspeaker. We're going to be stealing our Taptic engine from our donor phone because our other Taptic engine is pretty beat up. Just move this to over here and reconnect it. Now that we have our charging port correctly installed on our custom housing, it's time to go back to our original housing and remove our battery as well as the front camera, the back camera, and the flash, and the buttons, which I'm dreaded to do. These are really difficult to transfer over. 
but we'll see how that turns out. We're going to remove our battery by pulling on these pull tabs that Apple insists on using. I am grateful though that they did separate them. It used to be one pull tab, now it's two. Two at the bottom and two at the top. I guess that makes it four then. As I pulled on the pull tabs, I noticed that something else is coming off. I hope this isn't part of the battery. Otherwise, we'll have to take it from our donor phone. Unfortunately, this pull tab is giving me a lot of trouble. So, because I'm lazy, I'm just gonna pry up on the battery and hope that it doesn't bend. And it didn't, which is awesome. Now that we have our battery removed, we can begin to unscrew all the other components off the housing. We also need to transfer these side panels to our other housing. We got most of the side panels installed now we have to remove our wireless charger coil, which proves to be very difficult to transfer over. Hopefully we don't break it. We got it removed. I think it should still work, but there's no way to really know until we test it. So for now, we'll just install it. Now it's time to remove our front camera and face ID dot projector, which actually isn't held down by any screws. It just pops out. I'm not really sure what this component is for, but it's probably important. This is where the antenna used to be on the older models, so I assume it's something to do with that. We got our component on, now it's time to transfer over the camera. Before I transfer over the camera, I want to clean the inner lens a little bit, just because I saw some smudges. Now we'll transfer over our camera. It's now time to remove our volume buttons, the vibrator switch, and the power button. And as I was removing our two screws here, I noticed that it wouldn't come off. So I'm betting that there's a hidden screw right over here. And of course there is. Thanks Apple. We now have all our buttons on. So it's time to install the flash and button control that they provided for us. We now have all of that installed and we also relocated the flash. Now the cameras do look a little bit different, but it shouldn't be a huge difference. The flash is a little bit unstable, but with the logic board in, it should hold it down and everything should work as it's supposed to. We can now reinstall our front camera and dot projector onto the iPhone 12 housing. It's time to reinstall our iPhone XR logic board onto this housing. Now we have to install our battery. Unfortunately, we don't have the strips, so we're just gonna glue the top of the battery and also glue the bottom. Now we're pretty much done. All that's left for us is to put on our screen and see if everything works well. We have our screen connected, and this is the moment of truth. I really hope this works. Oh, of course the phone's dead. We're gonna charge it and come back. So the phone is now on, and I'm really happy, but we're still not done. We have to put in the last two brackets and close it up. So we got everything back on. Everything's good to go. Now we have to shut it. I'm just very curious as to how this is actually gonna close up because it's an XR screen. Let's try this. Oh, I guess it just goes in like that. And we're gonna get that crunch. There we go. There we go. Oh my God, this feels so nice. I really, really like this, I can't lie. It fits in pretty nicely. It does feel like an iPhone 12. It really feels like an iPhone 12. Guys, I am in shock. This is incredible. I think I'm one of the first people to ever do this um, since the iPhone 12 just came out. So just to let you know, guys, this is an iPhone XR and that's crazy. I mean, it's incredible. So after many long hours, we did it, guys. This is the iPhone XR and it looks exactly like the 12. I'm generally in shock. It feels great in my hands and even the flash works. I mean, the flash on the XR is down here and we relocated it over there. Guys, this is an awesome upgrade. I'm really happy. Um, definitely worth the hours of, of labor that I just did. Uh, special shout out to fanscreate.com. Thank you for sending me this. I'm probably, probably gonna use this as my driver from now on because I actually just genuinely love this. And I know that it is an XR, but it does really feel like a 12. I mean, to the average person, they wouldn't be able to tell the difference because it just feels so good in my hands. Anyway, guys, that is all. Thank you for joining me on this journey. This has definitely been worth it. I'm really excited to try this out uh, day to day. 
And if you guys can do this, definitely do it. Please like and subscribe, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one.